Good morning, YouTube Lofties here. I've just popped down to Penryn. Pick a new bike up. Brand new bike. Not many of these about. Some people have been lucky enough to ride them, but not many. This is the 2024 BMW R1300 GS ASA. Now, don't get your knickers in a twist. Yes, it's automatic, but you wait and see. If you're interested in the 2024 BMW, R1300GS ASA, you stick around, I'll see you in a minute. Well good morning YouTube, Loft is here, what do you think of this? Just looks like an R1300GS doesn't it? It's got a few little features, slightly different, let's have a close up shall we? There it is, there's something missing. This is the ASA. Shall we go for a ride? Okay, there's something slightly different about this model is, it's got a parking brake. So what we need to do is put the ignition on. There we go, everything comes to life. BMW Motorhead, make life a ride. As you can see, there's a big P. So we're in park. Now what we need to do is, what we need to do is pull and hold the brake lever in. As you start it, it automatically goes into neutral. So there we are. We can do a rev bump. We're in road mode. Now then, I'll put in dynamic later on. I'm not that bothered about the modes at the moment because you all know what the modes, you've all ridden the bike but you've not ridden this one. So the extra switch is this little bad boy. It's got a D for drive mode and an M for manual mode. So what are we in? I don't know. I think we've got to put it in gear to find out. So it's got a conventional gear lever. So as you can see a number one and an M has appeared. So I'll press the button. We've gone to D which is pretty much automatic mode. Shall we go for a ride? Come on then. Okay, so we're going to leave it in drive. So that was a nice shift from first to second. By the way, this is a brand new bike. Somebody's ridden it this morning and Dave rode it last night. So I'm just riding it normal D which is automated mode. How about this? We're going to go up through the town and just see what happens. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm going to ride it like a twist and go. See how we get on. So we're coming, we're approaching nice and steady, a little bit of back brake. It's automatically gone into D1, drive one. Here we go, we're clear. Let's pull away. That first to second is a bit of a clunk, but don't forget, this is a, a brand new engine and everybody who rides boxers will know that they get a bit better as you ride them more, especially the gearboxes. The pickup's very smooth. As you know, I'm a DCT owner. I've also got scooters. I'm used to riding twist and goes. And to be fair, in all the years I've been riding these DCTs and whatever, I've never actually pulled the clutch in by accident or gone for it. I don't have the problem. I just want you to see that gear change. D3. You can put it in full manual mode. But we're going to leave it in D and just use the brakes and the throttle. So it's gone from D4 to D3 automatically. Now I know a lot of people don't really want autos, but let's face it, when the kickstart was replaced by the starter motor and the electronic ignition replaced points, 
and then when fuel injection replaced the carburetors a few years down the line we're all grateful nobody wants to kick a bike over or set the points or alter the jets in a carb and I think it's going to be the same with the clutch it's a natural progression it's natural evolution of the motorcycle to actually ride it with no clutch and the fact that there's no lever doesn't really bother me anyway we'll clear this bit of traffic and I'll catch up here again just one thing the hill hold okay so I've just pulled the lever and held it not touching anything I'm going to accelerate the hill hold comes up they really have sorted the hill hold it is absolutely seamless and I've got to say that change from first to second I think it's smoother than my uh, DCT Honda it is very good this gearbox is superb okay we're going to test the slow maneuvering out around this island so we're clear from the right just let the revs drop to nothing it's in D2 you've got to say that's very very good my initial thoughts on the automatic very very good yeah just like the uh, the drive mode on the DCT sometimes it picks a little bit too high a gear now what you can do is although it's in D for drive or automatic you can just tap the pedal and you can drop it down yourself into second it stays in D it doesn't go back into manual that's very good that is so we're coming up a bit of an hill we start to labor a bit it's not going to change we just change for it excellent right the one thing I don't actually know is if when you change from road mode to dynamic whether it alters the amount of uh, lag in the gear change on a DCT you can uh, put it in D or you can put it in S1 S2 S3 and that determines how quick or how long it holds onto the gear change at the moment we're in road we're in the town we're in a 30 we're doing 26 mile an hour and it's absolutely sublime when I get to the top of the road I'm going to knock it into dynamic and see if it's any different so here we go dynamic yeah it's very good I'll put my visor down Yeah, the gear change is sweet. Here we go. Yeah, it's effortless. Absolutely effortless up to sixth gear. We're doing 57, 58 on the dual carriageway. Yeah, very good. To be fair, I think in most day-to-day -day use, you'd probably drive it in D and just override it occasionally with the gear lever. It's a, the quick shifter is the bestest quick shifter I've ever come across. It is absolutely sublime. So here we are, a typical scenario. I've just put it in first. So we're approaching the island. We're in D, it's gone automatically into two. And we're gonna give it a bit of stick up the hill. Here we go. Absolutely beautiful. Once you roll in and you ride it like a normal bike with no well, with a clutch, say for instance, and you because you're used to using the quick shifter, it's no different really. If you want to change gear, you just auto blip it down. The fact that you're in automatic mode, that doesn't really matter at all. Here we are. Nashville. Nice 
Yeah, yeah you've got all that grunt and power of the big GS with an automatic box. I absolutely love it. I've overridden it a few times. Right, we'll put it in manual, shall we? So I just throttle off and I put it in manual. Now it's changed. We've got a three with an M for manual, so we're in third gear. So I'll just flip it up into fourth. I don't like fourth, drop it down to third. That's quite good, isn't it? So it's old in third now, it won't change. Here we go, we'll nip through. Well, you can have hours of fun with this gearbox. So here we are, 51 mile an hour, sixth gear. I just tap on that blipper down, it goes to fifth, fourth. Third, how about that? Back up. Easy peasy. Shall we have a look at it? Okay, YouTube. Deal breaker, game changer, choice is yours. This is the R1300 GS. ASA. That stands for Automated Shift Assist. Auto. I told you a few weeks back, the clutchless revolution was coming. These bikes are coming with no clutches and they are getting better and better. So, the original R1300 starts at £16,640. So if you want to buy one, the cheapest form is in white. So it's 16640 you have to pay 495 for the comfort package, £1,660 for the dynamic, including ASA, and £730 for the touring. That knocks it up to 19525 So your cheapest ASA R1300 is £19,525. Lot of money. As soon as you start adding the TE version and you start adding the 719 options and luggage, you're talking 24, 25 grand. Lot of bike, it's fabulous. 110 foot pounds of torque and 145 brake horsepower, bringing it in at 237 kilograms wet. This, this clutch unit adds 2.1 kilos to the original bike, so that is fabulous, far lighter than a DCT. Seats the 850, you can have the automatic ride height as well, that's on this one, that's another extra. So, automatic shift assist, automated shift assist, manual mode, D mode, there's no clutch lever, everything's operated by the foot. It's got a parking brake system and it's also got hill old and all the rest of it. This bike has got the lot. It's fabulous. Not sure what you can see, but there's the gearbox. And just here on top of the gearbox is the transmission control unit. Here's your standard gear lever with a quick shift type mechanism. And here's your handlebar with no clutch. So we've got two electro and mechanical actuators which control both the clutch and the gear shift combined with a hydraulic link between the clutch and the slave fantastic really no need for a clutch lever you've got dynamic shifting in auto or manual automatic adjustment in d mode and you've got an avoidance of storing i know we're all saying oh, do we need it don't we need it i mentioned at the start of the video did we need electric starts? Do we need clutchless? Do we need fuel injection? I don't know. But I'll tell you something, when you ride this, it's fabulous. If you was two up touring in the mountains, in traffic, whatever, it's so much easier to ride an auto. As you know, I've got the DCT. I think at 13 grand, the DCTs are steel. But at 24 grand, this is expensive. But the question is, is the best bike in the world even better for an ASA? And my answer is yes. This system works fabulous. It is wonderful. I am extremely impressed. Would I buy one? If I had the money, I'd go and buy one tomorrow. It's wonderful. I love it in the triple black. I'd have the TE, of course, because it's got everything on it, centre stand and all the nonsense. I wouldn't bother with the ride height. Don't need it. 
the, the cruise control, the automatic cruise control, where it, it just slows and quickens to the traffic, works well, it's fabulous. They really have gone a long way to making this bike fabulous. Anyway, I'm gonna get my helmet on, and unfortunately, I've gotta take it back. Uh, Chris said, bring it back, please. I don't wanna take it back, I wanna keep it. See you in a minute. Okay, YouTube, so we're back. I think the one thing that's going to put a lot of people off or people are going to be skeptical about in general is slow manoeuvring. You know, I like to control it with the clutch. But trust me, these actuators and hydraulic locks and all the systems and this everything, the IMU, it's all connected. You can literally come down to a crawl. I've got my foot on the back brake. I'm doing three mile an hour. Three mile an hour. Now, what have you got to worry about? I could just steer it across here. Steer it across here. The slow manners of this automated clutch is absolutely second to none. Dare I say it? Is it better than the DCT? I don't know, I think it might be in some ways. It's certainly lighter. The DCT adds 10 kilos to the weight of a bike. Now, one thing we don't want is heavy bikes. As you know, this is a boxer. It carries its weight extremely low. So it's, it's general dynamics when it's going slow are very good anyway. But this clutch, I don't want to be sitting feathering the clutch and noncing about and everything. This is brilliant. So when we get around the corner, I'll just uh, speed it up a little bit. I don't want to go on and on and on about it, but it's very, very good. I'm going to say a big thank you to Chris and Dave down at Ocean at Plymouth. If you want to ride this bike, it's there now. It's gradually getting run in because people want to ride it. And uh, you'll be able to give it the beans in a couple of weeks when it's uh, fully running. But uh, just give them a ring, phone them up, and go and ride this. Go with an open mind. Don't think, oh, it's got no clutch, I won't be able to ride it. Just go with an open mind. Everything about this bike is sorted. It is the best GS they've ever made. Will the big boy be any better, the GSA? I don't know, I'm actually going to see it on Saturday morning and hopefully, once they've done the launch, I'll be able to ride it. And hopefully, and I say this, I hope it will have the automatic gearbox because it does make the bike better. So much easier to ride. Anyway, I'm probably gonna wrap it up now because I don't want to keep waffling on about how good it is and waxing lyrical. It's up to you to ride it and make your own minds up. It doesn't matter whether you want an automated bike or not. You are going to have them. They're coming. They're coming. Honda, BM, MV, KTM, Yamaha. They reckon the new Yamaha system is amazing. It's very similar to this in a lot of ways. Uh, hydraulics and electronics. The difference is the Yamaha's got the flappy paddles. I'm hoping to go and ride one of the Yamahas very soon, so I'll let you know how it compares. But for now, I'm riding this one and I think it's fabulous. So this is the Lofty Biker saying, ta for now. Ta-da.